Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another game streaming platform, this one called Boosteroid. And this company is based out of Ukraine. And what they do is provide you with a server that you can log into and play some, but not all, of the games that you might have purchased on Steam and Epic and a few other popular PC gaming platforms. And of course, the games run on their server and you can play them on your PC or on a mobile device or even on a television. And what we're gonna do in this video is take a closer look at what this service is all about. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Boosteroy did provide me with a few dozen hours to try the service free of charge. However, they are not paying for this review. No one is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what Boosteroid is all about. Now, Boosteroid will charge you in euros, and right now they're fairly competitive on their month-to-month -month plan at about the same price as what you would pay for GeForce Now's entry-level plan, and that gets you 1080p for your resolution and about 60 frames per second. The one difference though with Boosteroid is that they don't limit your session length. So right now, uh, GeForce Now will limit you to six hours on their entry level tier. They won't kick you off of Boosteroid unless you go idle. Now that plan is $9.89 euros a month or $10.77 per today's conversion rate. They also have an annual plan here, which is what's on their website. This is about 89 euros a year, roughly $97 or so US. And the only downside to this is that there are no refunds, nor is there a free trial. So my suggestion would be to do the month-to-month -month plan to start to make sure that it's going to work. And if it's something that you think you're going to use, then go to the annual plan. Because once you subscribe, they will not issue refunds, at least at the time I'm recording this video. What's not clear is what these servers are running. Now, I suspect that the specifications of each server are going to vary based on which one you're logging into. They have a number of servers located throughout the United States and Europe, although your mileage will vary based on where you are located in relation to those servers and what your ISP is allowing to pass through their network. So there's a lot of factors here that might impact your gameplay. What they do offer is a little test icon on their application here and on their website. So you can sign up without actually having to subscribe to the service. And what they suggest that you do is go in and run this speed test a couple of times to see what you're getting to their server. And what they want you to, to get is at least 25 megabits per second on the downstream and less than 20 milliseconds of latency. They said that you can go down to about 15 megabits per second to maintain the frame rate, but you'll uh, probably want to be north of 25 most of the time for the best experience here. Now, the computer I am testing right now is on Ethernet, and we are connected to Comcast Gigabit Pro Service, which is their top tier fiber optic internet package. And I did a video on this that you can see uh, linked in the video description. And if I was on their typical coaxial service, I would be seeing probably just under 20 milliseconds here. So where I'm located, I am just on the cusp of this not working out too well, but it looks like I am well within the parameters here for a somewhat decent gameplay experience. Like all game streaming services, I do recommend that you plug your computer in via ethernet to your network for the best results. Wi-Fi can be really flaky depending on where you are in the house and how many people are accessing it. So using Ethernet is going to give you the best experience and the most consistent experience. And again, I would suggest setting up an account and before you pay anything, run this test as many times as you can to make sure that you are falling within the parameters that they recommend. Now, Boosteroid is a streaming service, but you have to buy the games on Steam and other platforms first. They don't give you any games as part of the deal, although there are a number of free games on those platforms that you can stream for free uh, through Boosteroid. And you can see a list of all the supported platforms here. And what we'll take a look at in a minute is a game that I have on my Steam library. Now, not every game is supported. This is the similar issue we've been dealing with on GeForce Now. Although I found there are games that are supported on Boosteroid that are not supported on GeForce Now. So this is a partial list. And if you go in and sign up for the service, you can do a search for games that you might want to play. 
So I did find some games, again, that are not in there. Uh, there are games that are on GeForce now, like No Man's Sky, that are not available on Boosteroid. So it's going to be six of one, half dozen of the other. So I would definitely, again, do your homework before you commit to uh, paying anything here. Now, the way this works is that if you find a game that you want to add to your library, a game that you know that you have, you can click on the My Games here, and this will add it uh, over to your game library. It does not automatically synchronize with Steam and the other platforms, so you do have to spend some time linking up the games that you own with the games that are compatible on Boosteroid. And then when you log into their website or load up the app like I have here, this is the Windows app, you can go over to My Games here and see the games that you have added to your list of games that you own. And you can see they put a bunch of free ones here on the front page so you can try it out ahead of time here. But I was surprised to see that Red Dead Redemption 2 is available. So why don't we load this up here and see how it runs. Now one thing to note here is that when you run a Steam game from Boosteroid, you're not going to be brought to the game it's going to drop you off here on the Steam interface. And this can be a little tricky to navigate on a television or on a mobile device. As you can see, though, the latency here seems pretty minimal as I move my mouse around, which is good. One thing I did try earlier was installing games that were not supported on Steam. I was able to get a couple to install. And I asked Boosteroid about this because I know there's some licensing issues related to streaming games from the, these servers. They're actually written into the uh, license agreements for the games themselves. Boosteroid told me that if people do this a lot, they will get a notification and possibly kicked off the service. So they want you sticking to the games that they support directly. All right, so here we are in Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm using my game controller here to play it. And it looks like it's locking the frame rate in at 60 frames per second. So if you look in the upper right-hand corner, that is the Steam frame rate counter. And in the upper left-hand corner are the statistics coming down from Boosteroids. So as you can see, we're running at about 23 megabits per second. And it is streaming down to us around 60 frames per second. And our latency is holding steady here around 15 milliseconds, give or take. Uh, but overall, it seems to be running quite smoothly here. Now, I want to note that I record my videos at 30 frames per second. So if you see any juddering, it's due to uh, that frame rate getting translated down to 30. It looks pretty good here on the screen as I am playing around with it. Let's hit the Start button, though, and see what we've got for settings here in the game. So we'll jump over to Settings and see what this gets set to. Like other streaming services, they will, of course, set the settings for the server and then revert back to your defaults when you go back to your Steam Deck or one of your other devices that you're using at home. Let's take a look now and see how they configured this game. So here are the settings that they have for this game. It looks like they've got it kind of at the midpoint here, and you can see all the individual settings that they've enabled on it. I did notice that they locked in the V-Sync here, which is why we were locked at a 60 frames per second frame rate. I'm just going to turn this off here, see if we can do that, and see if that uh, will give us an idea as to what the maximum performance is here. So we'll lock that in and confirm it. So with the V-Sync off, it looks like we're getting about 70 to 75 frames per second, sometimes a little more than that. So it looks like they've kind of accounted for a little bit of a safety margin here, as this game obviously will have varying frame rates depending on what's going on in the game. But this gives you an idea, I think, of what the server might be running from a performance standpoint. And the game feels very playable with minimal latency here, at least uh, so far in my testing. Let's take a look now at another game and see how it performs. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you quit the game, it brings you back to the Steam menu here. And you do have to go ahead and close out the session in order to get out of this. Uh, so one way you can do that is by hitting Control F2 and going up here to End Session. Again, not the most elegant uh, process here of jumping in and out of these games, but once you get used to it, it's not as difficult. And again, there are some varying controls to do that based on what platform you are on. We're running the beta of the Windows app right now. On the web browser, you'll see a control pop up that you can use to end the session as well. So let's try out a game on the Epic Store. We're going to run Fortnite, which is one of the free games that you'll have access to here. And what this will do, at least in my experience, on the Epic Store is actually load the games up directly. It isn't until after you quit that you're dropped back off at the Epic Store. So what you'll see here is the uh, Boosteroid backdrop here lighting up, but now it's going to jump in 
and load up Fortnite directly. Again, the loading times here will be similar to what you would experience on a gaming PC because you basically are running this on a PC in the cloud. But if you got a really slow PC, this might actually feel a little bit faster. Let me get this game loaded up and we'll see how a keyboard and mouse experience is on Boosteroid. All right, so here we are in Fortnite waiting for a game to start up here and it feels pretty good to me. Maybe a little bit of latency here with the mouse, but not considerably different than other streaming services I've played this on. And we are getting that 60 frames per second frame rate here and all looks pretty good. And again, we're in a multiplayer game here, so we are connecting uh, to the internet to play this game through the Boosteroid server. And so all these players that you see here are players located in other places. And altogether here, it feels pretty good, I think, from the standpoint of latency. So let's see how this works on other platforms. And I wanted to show you a really neat feature of Boosteroid that is a little buggy right now, but I think has a lot of potential. So right now I'm playing the game here on my desktop computer. This is Rocket League. We're streaming from the Boosteroid server. And if I decided that I wanted to get up and play it on a different device, I can put my controller down, take out my phone here that's docked up with another controller, and tap on Rocket League. And what'll happen here after I go through the menu is it will transfer the game very quickly from one session to the next. And as you can see, I'm on my Wi-Fi here and I'm able to jump back into the game. The problem is that it doesn't recognize the game controller that I have plugged into this Android phone right now. And this controller does work when I boot the game from scratch with it. Um, but as you can see here, it recognizes it as a second controller and it's going split screen on me. So once I get the game started here, everything is working fine. So I think they've got to tweak this a little bit, but I was really impressed by how quickly you can switch from one device here to the next. And if I go back to the desktop here, we can reverse the process and go right back into Rocket League. And it will very, very quickly pick up the game uh, from the phone and now put it back on the desktop here. It's almost instantaneous. If they can just get this controller glitch figured out, I think this is going to be a really cool feature for jumping around to different devices. Now on mobile, when you attempt to play a Steam game, you will of course be brought to the Steam interface here and you'll have to navigate uh, with some pinching and zooming and pulling up the on-screen keyboard to get everything situated as needed. In this case, I'm trying to load up Need for Speed Heat which also connects to my EA Origin account. So you have to get all that stuff figured out on the phone screen. It might be easier to get some of those things logged in first on the computer and then switch to mobile. Let's take a look though at how Need for Speed runs on here once I get all this stuff figured out. All right, so here is the Need for Speed running on my Android phone. This is a Google Pixel 6a, which in full disclosure, Google sent to the channel free of charge a little while back. And connected to it is a GameVice controller that was also sent to the channel free of charge for review a little while ago as well. You can find reviews of both of these devices on the channel here. And the game seems to be working pretty well. This controller connects up via USB-C to the phone, but I am detecting a little more latency than I did on the PC. This is partly due to the fact that I am connecting over Wi-Fi via the phone, but also because I found that even with a game controller directly connected, there's a little more latency on Android devices than you would see on a PC with a directly connected game controller. But still, very playable here, about what I would expect and on par with what the experience is like with the other streaming services I've reviewed in the past. And I usually play games better, but when I'm talking, I can't concentrate on both for some reason. I'm gonna pause it here though, because I'm curious to see if we can switch over to my iPhone now. Now on the iPhone, they don't have an app that you can load up. So what you have to do is run it through a web browser. And this will be the case on other platforms as well, like the Mac and on Chromebooks here. But what I wanna do here is see if we can switch over, yes, we can, uh, the, switch over the session here to uh, the game. And actually it looks like the, let me turn the sound down here. Um, it looks like the controller actually switched over just fine. So this is working great here. We were able to jump from the Android phone to the iPhone here uh, using my Backbone controller and pick the game up right where we left off. And it feels pretty good here. I'm feeling a little less latency with the Backbone than I was on the 
uh, Android controller there, but still a little bit more than I think I'm used to when I'm plugged directly into a PC here, but still a pretty cool experience to be able to hop around like this. And just for the heck of it, let's see what happens when we go back to the desktop PC. All right, so here we are again on the phone. I'm gonna go back to my PC here and load up the game we're playing and hit let's go. And I think it's gonna go right back to uh, the PC now. And let's see how that goes. Yep, here we go. And actually the controller is working this time. So pretty cool, uh, again, to be able to jump around like this, but also I think the performance is pretty consistent here across the board. Again, a little less latency here on the PC app versus the mobile phones but all pretty playable and again on par with what I experienced on other platforms. A little bit earlier I did load up my Nvidia Shield and was able to get uh, the games running on there as well. Pretty much the same experience here. A little more latency on the Android TV platform which right now is the only officially supported TV platform uh, for Boosteroid. Uh, but all in on par, I think, with some of the other services I've run on that NVIDIA Shield. Now, Boosteroid also has microphone input for communicating in games. That will be muted by default. Additionally, you can stream your game's output to YouTube right now. So you can do a game stream that originates from their server over to YouTube. So altogether, I think we're looking at a pretty good service here. It is really good at its core task, which is the game streaming side of things. Uh, the interface needs some work. I think it's a little hard to know what games you have versus what you can play. So I'd like to see a little more synchronization there. We're kind of spoiled, I think, with how GeForce Now, I think, more effectively handles that, where you get a list of games that are synced up with your accounts. You push the button and the games load up. Uh, here, you've got a little bit more of a hoop to jump through to get things up and running. But once the games are running, very consistent frame rate, decent latency here, at least at my location with a pretty good internet connection. And all together, I think it's a pretty good service here and a really good start from this startup. And I saw some games on Boosteroid that were not available on my GeForce Now service. So I would say go in and just set up an account. Don't pay for anything yet. Do that test, look at the library of games and what they support, and if it works for you, maybe try it for a month and see how it goes. But all in, it feels like they're putting together a pretty decent service here. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.